Yeah, uh, that's the most complicated part when you talk about yeah. migraine. But it's complicated not because of the topic, but because we are not fully aware of the mechanism. So even in the scientific paper, they just hypothesize what could be the main pathophysiological mechanism in migraine, but we are not fully aware of uh, if we are still missing something, some parts of the migraine pathophysiology. Um, we know, for example, that now migraine is considered a state, uh, a brain state of altered excitability, and that's something that has a lot of scientific literature on the background, uh, an alteration of the sensory processing. So we know that different areas of the brain, as particular of the different cortex areas, are not working exactly as they should. And that's created some kind of trouble in terms of symptoms and manifestation of migraine, not just about pain. Uh, another mechanism, which is called thalamocortical dysrhythmia, because we know that the connection between, between the thalamus and the different cortex area are not working again as they should in normal healthy subjects and central sensitization mechanism. All of these mechanisms have been deeply studied and they are, seems to be at least to now, they all involved into migraine pathogenesis. But if we want to move to the uh, most studied mechanism is the one about the trigeminal vascular system activation. So that theory is quite old because the first time it was proposed, it was on a publication on the Lancet journal in 1981, so more than 40 years ago in which the author, the neurologist, for the first time proposed that migraine was not a vascular disorder as it was considered before, about vasodilation, vasoconstriction, so mainly based on vascular. And that was an error that it was made for many years because of the quality of pain that, as we said before, was pulsating. And in medicine, everything which is pulsating is always, you know, associated to a vascular dysfunction, so to something vascular. And now we know that the trigeminal, that the vascular part is correct, but it's not enough. Now we know that the trigeminal vascular system is activated. What is so this kind of trigeminal vascular system? This system is mainly uh, made by projections, axonal projections from, from the trigeminal ganglion uh, that innervate the PL, the arachnoid, and the dural blood vessels. And during the attack, these nerve endings become activated, it becomes sensitized and release some vasoactive neuropeptides like substance P, neurokinin, and most important, the CZRP, so the calcitonin gene related peptide, which is also the target of the new drugs developed for migraine, uh, because we know that it's released in large amounts, so the drugs now try to avoid its release or to bind its receptor instead of the CZRP molecule itself. Uh, so this is basically what we know what's happening right now in the migraine brain, uh, which creates a condition which is now called neurogenic inflammation and also vasodilation. So basically you can say that from the trigeminal nerve, there is this release of uh, neuropeptides which produce more inflammation and more pain sensitization. And the trigeminal cervical complex that you mentioned before in the question becomes sensitized because of the trigeminal vascular system activation. Because this nociceptive information, once the axonal projections have been sensitized by the, those... Uh, those substances, those vasoactive neuropeptides, goes to the trigeminal cervical complex, which basically is a brainstem region, which is receiving information from the trigeminal nerve and also from C1, C2, and C3, so the, from the first three nerve roots. Uh, by doing that, is an intermediate station, which is receiving uh, afferent and nociceptive information, both from the trigeminal region, so from the face, for example, from the mouth, and from the upper cervical spine. And that it's really important because it's the neurophysiological link which allows us to understand why something which is not working properly in the neck would affect the pain which is referred and felt by the patients in the head region, in the trigeminal region, okay? In particular, the trigeminal cervical complex, those information then travel to the thalamus and hypothalamus through projection of second order neurons and then to third order neurons to the, uh, to the cortex areas. So it's a kind of first station in which the information are sent to higher center for, to be processed and to produce the pain sensation and the other sensation and symptoms related to migraine, which are not just pain 